This is an Arduino compatible circuit board. We're going to use this today to demonstrate what hardware interfaces have in common with software interfaces. Check out this little guy. It's a little tiny circuit board, but it has so many things involved here. This right here is the Wi-Fi, and as long as you have a wireless compatible device, it'll connect to it. This right here is your power adapter, and as long as you have something that A, fits in there and provides the correct voltage and amperage to the circuit board, we'll make it work just great. And then you have uh, these input-output interfaces right here along both sides. And as long as you conform to the voltage and uh, know how to turn the pins on and off, you can pretty much plug anything in there. And then we have other things on the board here that aren't so uh, friendly. These are hard-coded right in there. In order for us to switch these out, we would have to do quite a bit of surgery in order to pull that out. And for that reason, these are not swappable, where whatever you plug into these interfaces are swappable. Keep in mind this one is a wireless one. An interface is a specification. For hardware, it might be a physical or electrical specification. For software, it's method and signature properties. All right, so now we're going to jump into code and kind of see how interfaces look like in software. Remember, they're just a specification. So, but before we get there, let's kind of create a need for an interface. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a method, and we're going to call it uh, play concert. And right now, it's just going to do very unuseful things. We're going to do play concert. Uh, let's see, right line playing local musicians. And that'll work fine for a while because you're just playing some local musicians and always good. And then next, we decided let's have a uh, national, or actually, let's go with world act come into play. And that person that we will um, hire will be uh, David Gilmore of Pink Floyd. And he has some properties about him. Let's say his name, let's see, is going to be David Gilmore. And let's see, what else can we do about him? He's going to have something such as he can perform. Let's move the mouse there. And David Gilmore will perform by simply doing performing, let's see, oops, rad solo in, Let's see, from Pink Floyd's Comfortably Numb. Okay, so awesome. So we have uh, David Gilmore, and he knows how to perform Comfortably Numb, among other things. But for now, let's do that. And so we're going to go ahead and say, you know what? We're going to have David Gilmore come in and play. And instead of doing the local musicians, we'll, uh, you know what, the local musicians, they can open up for David. So we'll do console.writeline, and we'll do David, or musician at this point, and you will perform. So uh, what does not like? Oh, you know what, it doesn't like that. So let's just take it out of the console log there and there we go so if we run this but before we do uh, we have to actually tell it to so we're going to do play concert and I'll make this static all right so we're gonna play a concert and we need a new David Gilmore every time and there we go let's add one thing so our console just kind of hangs there, doesn't automatically close. Boom, there we go. So, David Gilmore will be playing after the local musicians open up for him, if all goes well here. And then he does, he plays his rad solo from Pink Floyd's Comfortably Numb. 
But later on, people grow tired of David Gilmore. I know it's difficult, but people will grow tired of him. And instead, they would say, you, want, you know, it would be nice if we had any sort of musician come in and play after the local musicians. So we have a problem in software, or at least in C Sharp and some other languages. Um, we always require David Gilmore. So rather than David Gilmore, we could say, you know what, let's hire Prince. And Prince, rest in peace. Uh, we're going to resurrect him, maybe a holographic version of him. We will go ahead and add him here. We want him to have similar things as David Gilmore, Prince, and instead of playing Comfortably Numb solo, we're going to do perform, uh, let's see here, Kiss by him. All right, oops, let's make that go there. And then we come back here and say, ah, yes, we're, we're, we've grown very tired of David Gilmore, so now we want Prince to come in, and now when this happens, we'll say, oh, we need Prince to come in here. Oh, that made it real ugly. There we go. Now, David Gilmore, sorry, we now want uh, to have Prince come in and play Kiss. Okay. Problem is, is every time we do that, we have to switch out a couple of things. The the what concrete version of uh, the class we have to new one up here, and we we can only take a Prince variable. So wouldn't it be nice that no matter who was playing the concert, I didn't have to switch this out? And so we can do that by adding an interface. So I will use something called an I musician. And in the .NET world, we always kind of name things with I, capital I, then a capital of whatever we call it here. We're going to make it a public interface here. And I've noticed that both um, David Gilmore and Prince have a name, and they know how to perform. So let's create a specification. Our performers, our musicians, they should have a name. So we're going to do string name. Oops. And we're going to have a getter. So that's what a property looks like. And then the other thing they can do is they can perform. There we go. So the interface has no code in it other than it creates a specification. I have a name and I can perform. So now if we come back here to here, we can say, you know what, let's just get any old musician in here and notice that that's happy down here. Because an interface says, well, whatever you give me here, I know it knows how to perform and I know it knows how to, or has a name. In fact, let's go ahead and add the name here. So we can say, uh, musician dot name and maybe we do something like to take the stage and hmm let's figure out well why can't we do it here it's because Prince we have to call his agent we have to say Mr. Prince agent I need you to make sure you do a few things in order to perform at our venue and that is I need a name and you need to know how to perform and of course Prince says well I know how to do both of those and we can say okay I conform to the iMusician interface and notice that I have the string name with a getter and a perform uh, that returns a void which is a part of the contract here and that's another thing that uh, interfaces often get called they get called contracts so now, Prince may perform at our concert, at our venue, because he is an iMusician. Notice that went away there. So if I run this again, there we go. Prince is about to take the stage, and he's going to perform Kiss. Awesome. Now, let's say we want to have David Gilmore come back. We've, we've uh, worked it out with his agent, and he's going to come back. And, hmm, one of the uh, one of the QA people says, hmm, David Gilmore is not qualified to be an I musician. Of course, everyone gasps and says, but it's David Gilmore. And so what we have to do is we have to call his agent back and say, well, David, the uh, the managers here, the insurance people, they say you have to conform to the I musician specification. And as long as you do that, then you can perform here. So now that he conforms to that specification, David Gilmore, we've welcomed back. And there we go. David Gilmore is about to take the stage, and then he plays his rad solo from Pink Floyd's Comfortably Numb again, which is awesome. So let's say later on, uh, Prince decides that he wants, he doesn't want a name. So maybe he wants to be known by, I don't know, something like a symbol, which I don't know who would do that, but maybe he would. Notice here the compiler says, hmm, you're no longer conforming to the iMusician contract, and that way I'm going to throw a compiler error, and this won't build. And in fact, if we come here, the compiler would probably complain here as well too. 
that's not complaining yet, but it, eventually it would because Prince does not have a name and he doesn't conform to that. So if we say, you know what, Prince, yes, you do. And then we can say, as long as you call yourself the artist formerly known as Prince, we should be good. And so we come back here, all is well, we run the program again, and there we go. The artist formerly known as Prince is about to take the stage, and we're in business. So there's a few things at play here. The interface performs as a placeholder. So it says, well, as long as I have any musician um, that conforms to a contract or a specification, they're allowed to play the concert before our local musicians. That's great. If they don't conform to that, they're not allowed to. So it's very possible that uh, someone like David Gilmour, who's in a different band, might have multiple specifications that he can conform to. So let's say we add yet another interface, and let's call this one an iBand, because he performs with a band as well. And then we can say, you know what, this particular specification requires that you have a band name. And there we go. So David, not only can he be an iMusician, he can also be in an iBand. Now it's going to squawk at us and say, well, wait a second. Um, the name band is not implemented in two spots. So uh, you got to be careful with naming. So let's uh, go back here to the iBand and let's call this band name just for ease of name collision. I can use the built-in uh, helper here and boom, band name, and I'm going to return Pink Floyd here because that one's pretty easy. And now if I come back here, as long as just the I musician is required, David Gilmore can play there, and so can Prince. What can't happen is if I change this to only bands can play, well, David Gilmore is going to be able to play there, but of course now the venue kind of has to do some different things. Well, hmm, I need to know the band name. And it looks like we don't, they don't know how to perform, so we may have to negotiate with them and say, you know what, you also know how to perform. And if we go back to David, looks like we ha already have a uh, perform in there, and there we go. Let's go ahead and run this. And now we have Pink Floyd is about to take the stage, performing the rad solo from Pink Floyd's Comfortably Numb. However, at this point, Mr. Prince, or formerly artist formerly known as Prince, he can no longer play at this venue because he does not conform to the I-band specification. He is an I-musician. So the takeaway here is, is that a class can have an implementation of more than one band because an interface is, is basically saying, I need you to implement a few things in order for you to conform to a specification. So you can, in C Sharp, have multiple interfaces associated. However, with inheritance, you can only inherit from one class. So interfaces are very useful when you want to enforce certain uh, specifications or contracts. And uh, one thing that we haven't covered is abstract classes, which I'll do in another video. That has one problem, and that is you can only inherit from one particular abstract class. So using different uh, abstraction uh, items in C sharp, you know, is important and you should know that you can have multiple interfaces implemented where you can only have one abstract class. Again, I don't want to kind of get into abstract classes right now. So anyway, uh, that is what an interface does for us. Um, it makes things swappable. It makes it so we're not tied to a particular concrete version of a class because the, the interface itself is abstract. Uh, or is an abstraction, and the class uh, that implements said abstraction is concrete, and we can swap those out. Now, dependency injection is an entirely different thing, but if you want, you can actually switch out um, or have a factory, which is yet another pattern, select your concrete class in order to feed into your uh, concert here. So anyway, that's what interfaces are kind of about, and of course they get deeper, but that should get you going, and you should use abstractions for just about everything you do, and make sure you subscribe.